What's up guys, LOH Low Tech. We do a quick overview of the Cetus 3D printer and it's somewhat of a unique feature of being able to switch out the print heads almost on the fly to get varying levels of quality or speed. Let's take a look. Starting off with the process of how to change the print heads, the first thing you want to do is to withdraw the filament. So using the software, press withdraw under the calibration settings, pull out the filament there. And then once you have the filament out, you can use the metal wrench that they include inside the printer box to push into the print head at the top and turn it counterclockwise in order to remove the print head. Once the print head is out, you can then you repeat the process but going in reverse to insert the new print head into the machine. And then once that is in there, we'll put the filament back in through the top and use the extrude function on the print software. At this point, you're gonna to want to recalibrate the print height because it does change by something like 0.3 millimeters. Uh, depending on how tightly you screwed in the new print head. So you only need to change the print height, not necessarily level the bed again. But once that's done and you select the new print nozzle size from the software, you should be ready to go. So there are three different print heads that come in the box. There is the 0.2 millimeter, the 0.4 millimeter, and the 0.6 millimeter. And each of them can be set to a different layer height. Uh, the 0.4 overlaps the 0.6 and, the, and also the 0.2. Um, the, the lowest you can go on the 0.6 millimeter is about 0.3 millimeter layer heights. The, the highest you can go on uh, the 0.4 millimeter is 0.35 millimeters, which is this guy right here. And the lowest you can go is 0.1. So 0.4, 0.3, 0 0.35, 0 0.1, over here is the 0.2 millimeter print heads, and this is a 0.15 millimeter, that's the thickest it can go, as well as a 0 0.05 millimeters. And each of them has their strengths and weaknesses, but when you start getting to the, the thickest levels that each of them can print, you do start getting a little bit lower quality between them. So. Taking a look at these two guys here. So this one right here is printed at 0.35 millimeters on the 0.4 millimeter print head. And it looks okay, but it does have a lot of imperfections into it. Uh, some of the, the PLA is sagging in some places here. Um, whereas if I pull up the 0.6 millimeters, and this is at 0.3, millimeter layer height, and you can kind of see that this is much cleaner of a print. So working at the, the smaller end of the layer heights definitely is much better than working on the higher ends of the layer heights. Uh, it just is a little bit more consistent there. When you get all the way down to the 0 0.05 millimeters, Pretty much the PLA becomes almost like a satin kind of finish. It, all the sheen is almost gone because the layers are so small that it almost looks like it's you know not even printed at all. One of the downsides is, and you can kind of see it just a little bit here on the top, is that it does have a, a lot more of like wisping of the PLA and that's just because of how thin it's printing. Um, so it's, it's much more noticeable on the, the 0.05 than it is on the 0.15, but yeah. Uh, that is one of the downsides, but it, it does look amazing. Comparing that against the, the very thickest you can go with 0.6 millimeter print head on 0.4 millimeter layer height. And yeah, this guy, it, it, this guy's chunky. Um, but he still looks okay. I think a lot of people would still be pretty happy if their printer made this. So uh, none of these prints are horrible. Probably the worst one is actually the, the, the 0.35 millimeter. It's just like the, the more messy of, of the bunch. But really, the, the detail you can kind of see kind of gets higher and higher as, as we go down. This is not the most high detail model, but it does have some very sharp points um, as well as some very hard edges. So you can kind of see how that goes. Uh, I was really impressed with the 0.2 millimeters, um, just how good they, it does look and is that how well it actually prints. 
The 0.6, uh, it does look pretty good at the 0.3 millimeter layer heights, but the problem is, in most cases, you're gonna want to print something a little bit higher detail than that. So that having that limitation um, in the software uh, means that for me, that this is no longer a, a viable option here uh, with the 0.6 millimeters, at least as a long-term solution. However, one of the biggest things that is uh, nice about switching out to different print heads is the time savings. So uh, this guy way over here, the biggest layer height, you know, thickest print head, uh, he came out in like 30, 35 minutes. So, you know, he, he, he came out quick. And that time does scale up as, as we go across. Um, obviously there's a little bit of overlaps around here, but somewhere between 35 minutes, getting close to about 45 minutes, this guy's being uh, some again somewhere around 45 minutes and this one here is starting to be closer to you know the, the three to four hour range this is also here uh, roughly about four hours of the 0.15 millimeters and this guy way over here who definitely looks the best took almost 12 hours to print so <laughs> um, it's definitely something where if you're going to be printing something very very high detail then yes but going to the 0.05 millimeter layer height is going to be an option um, but printing something huge on that layer height or whatever is going to take weeks. Like if you're gonna print something 200 millimeters tall and you're using 0 0.05 millimeter layer heights, it's gonna be on there forever. Um, whereas this guy, I think he could print all the way to the top in like six hours. Like it's <laughs> it, it's it's kind of ridiculous how fast you can get this thing to print um, at the 0.6 millimeters at 0.4 millimeter layer height. Since you're almost always printing with a raft with the Cita just because of how it's designed, the, the raft actually scales up with the layer height. So depending on what layer height you use, the bigger the raft it's going to be um, in terms of physical dimensions as well as thickness. So uh, this is the 0 0.05 millimeter layer height and um, it's pretty tiny and you can see that it's kind of damaged. And that really shows off one of the downsides of the 0 0.05 millimeters is that the layers are so close together that they start bonding to each other as well as they're so thin that they kind of don't hold their own weight. They, they pretty much break all the time. So in terms of the raft, as well as in terms of supports, you really have a little bit harder time pulling um, things away from the supports as well as the raft just because of how thin they are. If you go all the way up to the 0.4 millimeters, um, and the and the the 0.6 millimeter nozzle, and you get this beast. I mean, it. You, you, I mean, I can't. I can't even bend this thing. Like it's, uh, it's it's pretty thick. Um, and I mean, com compared even in, in terms of of size, you can kind of see that it's even a, a wider and taller print here too. That also does mean that just because you're printing fast doesn't mean you're also necessarily saving any extra PLA because the things like supports, the things like the raft, those all get thicker as you go too. That also leads me to one of the last things I've kind of figured out about the software here is that even if you tell it to print with zero supports, which all of these were printed with zero supports, you still get supports, uh, at least some supports. With this guy here, he was standing about there. And even though this model actually needed no supports, it decided to print supports for his hands here so that he was gripping better. And I mean, while it's nice that it, it tries to kind of hold your hand and make sure that you're having a, a good print, um, when I tell it have, to have no supports, it, it should have no supports. and. There is absolutely no way to turn that off. Maybe unless you print without a raft, but since there's screw holes in the middle, you really can't do that. Overall, since the printer comes with the three different sizes and really you can get some pretty nice results all the way through um, with them. If you need to print something really big, you can easily swap on the, the 0.6 millimeters and get something printed out really fast. If you really wanna do like tiny model work or whatever, um, you can go all the way down to 0 0.05 if you, you go down to the two millimeter nozzle. It's kind of limited since the the supports and all that stuff 
um, are such a pain to remove at that layer height just because they don't, like they kind of melt, it kind of fuse together because there is so little distance between them. But if you have something that you can really print without any supports, you can get some amazing prints out of here. Um, but for most people, sticking with the one that comes with is just fine. I mean, at the at 0.1 millimeters, you can get some really nice looking prints out of here. Um, it does have the most flexibility because it has the widest range out of any of the, the print heads. So for people with one 3D printer, the Cetus is their only 3D printer, I'd probably still recommend that they stay with the 0.4 millimeters, at least for most prints. There's not really a huge benefit um, unless you, you really need like that extra speed or that extra level of detail uh, to go into a different print head. However, if you do have another 3D printer like the Anycubic uh, and that one already comes with a 0.4 millimeters, then using one of the other ones as do the default in the CDS, whether the 0.2 or the 0.6, is a nice option to have. Um, and for me, I'm probably gonna keep it on the 0.2 millimeters just because if I need something printed a little faster, I always have the Anycubic to use. Uh, and so I can use the CDS when I have more time and I want a little bit more precision inside of my prints. Thanks for watching guys. This is LOH Low Tech and this has been a quick review of the print quality of the CDS Mark II. Subscribe.